They can be in this at any moment. They just gotta up their mental game, let their talent speak. Amazing placement. What a shot. A gutsy overhead. Aspect of mental toughness here that's just so different. I like the body language of all four players. Oh, look at that shot! Great hands from Kiro. Alavero, Regalado, and in the disc court from Greenwich, Connecticut, Jose Salazar. Regalado Hello and, and welcome. Salazar have won the toss and they've elected to receive. Hello again and welcome to the APTA Tour presented by Volley. We are live from the Manufacturers Golf and Country Club, Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, bringing you the 2024 Philly Open, which is the 15th stop on the 2023-24 APTA Tour with live streaming brought to you by APTA membership, APTA national sponsors Volley Infusion, and local sponsors Levant, Xenon, the Unilaber, James D. Morrissey, Inc., Glass, Do Glass Doctor, Fit Life, Creative Financial Group, AC Capital Management, Synergy, Devon Sports Cars, and Citrus Salon and Day Spa. I'm Patty Hogan along with Steve Sullivan bringing you men's semifinal action between our tournament number one seed, Juan Araya and Graham McNerney, McNerney up against the upstart team of the year, Alvi Regalado and Jose Salazar. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Patty. A uh, quick start to the match. I think each team took about one and a half serves to warm up. They've played uh, two matches already today. This is our third match. So you mentioned, Patty, this is the men's semifinals. We are actually playing no ad scoring. So best two out of three sets, no ad. Um, just to orient the viewers, serving is uh, McNerney into the ad court to Al Regalado. So we have McNerney and um, Araya. Araya is wearing the camouflage pants in the blue top. And it looks like Regalado and Sells are on the near side now, are both in gray sweatshirts and uh, black pants. Yeah, Regalado and Salazar, oh my lord, they came out of nowhere and just part of a group along with Guillermo Nunez who have taken our the sport by storm this season and Regalado and Salazar, I mean, their ascent in this sport, their, their improvement is just out of this world good, compar comparable to probably Johan Durant and they are the number three ranked team in the country. Um, and, you know, you have Juan and Graham McNerney. Graham on top are, you know, APTA Cup standings, number one. Uh, Graham is just, you know, has played a, a phenomenal year with lots of different partners. He and McNerney took the, you know, tour by storm with their win out in charities. Just kind of kick off the first part of the season. And this match is huge in terms of, you know, what's going to end up in, with the seats, you know, in nationals in Boston in a couple of weeks. You know, Patty, I... I started watching a lot of paddle early this season, um, participated in, you know, helping organize the Baltimore Open. And at the beginning of that week, I had multiple people sort of come up and say, watch these two. They just played in Montclair. Um, they won Montclair. They were unseated at the time uh, in a smaller event at the time, which was Baltimore. And um, you, you sort of said it. Not only have they quickly come on the scene, I think I heard recently that Maybe it's Alvi is 18 months in the paddle here, Jose. I mean, they're really new. This is their second season playing tournaments. Um, so they have the racket skills, but their paddle IQ seems to be the most impressive. Every week it just seems to be a little bit better. These guys are just rock stars, and, you know, their they're racket skills, high-level tennis players just kind of put them out here, and, and their understanding of the game within the game within the game of platform tennis I find extraordinary. I've watched for... Decades, Stephen. I'll leave it at that. We won't even count the number of decades I've been watching this this sport, and you know the the level of play just keeps going up and up and up. And these guys have just floored me with their ability right away to really have an incredible understanding of you know how you how you build points when you go for it, you know not being aggressive when you don't need to be aggressive, but you know taking your shot when it's presented to you. Um, these guys have it all, and. You know, just so impressed and so fun to watch. And here they are against, you know, you got Juan Araya, uh, former national champ with Mark Parsons. They won in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, Juan has done everything in the sport. Juan uh, did a phenomenal job as a longtime pro at Greenwich Country Club. Um, now has gone into business on his own with uh, Paddle House. 
up in Connecticut, along with a couple of his paddle playing friends and Mark Fischel and Mark Parsons and Patricio and, you know, but Juan's been an amazing player in our game, really helped the game transcend. And as we talk about how the levels keep going up and up and up, you know, I remember going back when Araya came out and he was the first, you know, one of the first guys who could really could hit the cutter drop. That kind of changed the game and started being able to open up the court for all these players. And now you look at players and if they don't have some of those, you know, those spectacular shots to end points, you know, it's hard. To, it, it is really hard to end points. And, you know, kudos to Salazar and Regalado for understanding that and really yielding to the game in the confines of a court and the screens around it and how that just keeps points going on and on and on. And they, they are two guys who don't seem to have a shot clock. You know, you watch them and they just have a willingness to play as long a point as is necessary or can quickly capitalize <laughs> if given an opportunity. You, you know, you see uh, the team right there now. They took their gray sweatshirts off. They're wearing their Regalazar team name, uh, long sleeve yeah. tees. Um, but it's interesting, you know, Juan Araya has this great cut slash overhead. He also has the, the cutter that can, you know, be the kill shot. Salazar and Regalado, they hit a lot more rollers. They take the air out of their volleys. They're very patient when they're at the net. There you go, right, that very sort of typical reset push volley. Uh, and the roller, Salazar loves his roller. Um, there's probably a shot or two they don't have, you know, the, some of the shots that Durant or, or Juan have. Um, but they're still accelerating in, you know, both their paddle IQ and their, their paddle, you know, tactical skills. So this is really, well, to me, yeah, it's an interesting match because, you know, we saw, I think you, myself, and Brad Easterbrook called these two play um, Duran and Mitchell at the Philly Cricket Club earlier in the season, and they were a little bit sort of outclassed by the experience yeah. and the, the skills of, you know, Johan sort of took that match over. So today, this has been maybe the year of, McNerney, right? Graham is, I believe, he's still leading the APTA Cup. He's not only the points leader, he's won with multiple people. Um, to me, this is a super, super interesting match to sort of set the stage for nationals. Yeah, you know, and you, and you talk about who's got what shots. I've seen Graham hit every shot in the book. I've seen Juan hit every shot in the book. I've seen Alvi hit every shot in the book. And I've seen Salazar hit every shot in the book. I think the key and why these four players are at the top of our sport is they know when to use them. It's a situational thing. And then when the moment occurs, I feel like they only have one really good choice in their brain, the way they're approaching the game. And that's what I see as the big difference in the sport. Whereas people who look like they have equal amount of talent possibly don't go into it with a similar mindset. And then when there's moments that are the differentiating Love moments 30. in matches, feel like they have so many thoughts swirling where these guys just look like they're out on a boat ride on a calm lake in a summer afternoon. I mean, it, it's remarkable, Steve. Yeah, they certainly are in no rush when they play paddle, which is great to see because this is typically the biggest trap for a, a tennis player who converts into paddle, um, trying to win with offense, trying to finish points too soon. Uh, these two are in no rush. Um, Jose's really the more patient of the two. He sits in the deuce court um, when he's returning. Alvi Regalado is the one who's going to bring a lot of athleticism, a lot of movement. He's going to look to blitz, um, fake, um, you know, use his athleticism to sort of generate opportunities, um, where Salazar is going to be a little bit more defensive. He's very, very steady, as you can see here. Um, so it's a great contrast. I think they're a very good team. You know, they, they offset you know, each other in Very a good, good way. Steve. Very good, Steve. I'm going to go lights out. They have a chance to win nationals in Boston. Early, early call. Um, not a difficult call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, collectively, you know, as we uh, near the end of the season here, that's why the Philly Open is such a critical, you know, tournament for these guys. There's a lot going, you know, on the line here. And you look at these two teams in particular, in addition to Humphrey, Sosis Koning, Going into this tournament, they were ranked three, four, five in the country. So these matches will have a huge impact on the seed they get going into Boston for nationals. 15, 30. I agree, and I think this this generally, you mentioned at the at the beginning, Patty, this is the 15th stop on the APTA tour, the 16th being nationals in Brookline at the country club. Um, I was 
you know, 8 a.m. I showed up at Philly Cricket this morning to watch 15, some very 40. interesting matches over there. And even uh, talking to Jose and Alvi for a little bit, they are, they're amped. You know, and I think there's a lot of teams. 30, um, 40. Powers and Nunez, one of them, trying to reset and get ready, you know, introduce themselves to each other for nationals. These guys, they're all sort of using this as their last opportunity to really gel, to really sort of get match tough. Um, nationals is in two weeks, I believe, from today. Um, so this is this is the time. This is the last chance for these teams to really, you know, gel and see uh, who's going to come in with momentum. Yeah, and I think some of these players, like a Graham McNerney, he thrives on playing. The guy plays more tournaments than probably anybody on the tour, and he's had incredible results. You know, he won Short Hills with Mark Powers. He won charities with Juan Araya. Finished second Dave, in the Indy in the Open McNerney, the with Eric set, West. Two, zero. Early cricket, third with Juan. Um, Steel City, third with um, Matic Trewinski. Montclair, they got the semis. Graham with Juan. So you just keep going. Graham, Graham is phenomenal, and, and he shows up, and he performs every single time. I mean, he doesn't seem to have an off week, which is... Again, another remarkable thing to have this consistency, you know, throughout the very long winter months. <laughs> of 15. Yeah, Grant Graham's another player like Jose Salazar. Obviously, has a lot more experience, but he's also in no rush. He's one of the most patient players. He has every shot, but he's really patient. And okay, we're two games into this match. Juan's hit two cutters to win each of the first two games. Um, so Juan Araya, I think he may have been a little bit injured um, last tournament, why he didn't play Indy perhaps, but uh, he looks like he's on top of his game. So Juan's offense and McNerney's sort of patience and, and defense, this could be a very formidable team today. Yo. Araya and um, McNerney played against um, Alvi and uh, Jose. Um, and. They beat, Alvin and Jose won that match. They beat uh, Juan and Graham in Detroit in their only matchup of these two teams this season. Alvin's uh, teachers over at Orange Lawn Club nearby uh, South Orange, New Jersey. Salazar, um, born in the Canary Islands in Spain, lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. He's the pro up at the Stanwich Country Club. 30-15. Pat, you'll have you may remember better than I do. Was it Detroit the match where Juan was cramping oh. in the third set? Was that against? Uh, I think it was against Salazar and Regalado that he he was either cramping or had a you know a strained calf or or ankle. I think I remember him limping around at the end of that match. But I do remember that was a very sort of uh, big moment, the first Grand Prix for Salazar and Regalado, but uh, beating one of the premier teams. Um, Certainly a big 40, part of uh, how you get to be number one if they if they are on that path. Yeah, the thing about Juan Araya that's quite remarkable is, you know, he comes out, you know, in between the last tournament he's played in this tournament, he's probably played three pickleball tournaments, a couple padel tournaments. The guy's just a rock star, and he just transitions from sport to sport to sport. It doesn't really matter. And I, I never worry about Juan as a competitor. He, he just, he just brings it. All the they time. They made the first set three games to zero. Yeah, this is a phenomenal start for them, Steve, um, which I thought they had to have in this match. Uh, I think Alvin and Game. Jose, I think they're indifferent from what I've seen in watching them. Like, it doesn't seem like the score matters to those guys, which is the highest praise I can give a team. Um, Sometimes it does matter to some other teams, and I, I think it's important for Araya McNerney to have this phenomenal uh, three love start to get things going in semifinal action. I agree. What's in the other yeah. semis, Steve? So, the other semis, um, I'm not sure if they've taken the court yet. We have Nunez and Mark Powers um, were there first when I last looked at the draw. Let's see who they're playing against. Oh, I know. Who do you got? Chris Humphreys, Felipe Osis Koenig. Okay, so they have taken the court. I don't have a score update, but we'll check on that. But they are uh, playing two courts down, so they've, uh, they've started their match as well. Yep, following this match will be Good women's team. finals no. action. And then we'll finish off Saturday Night Light with the finals of the men's.
So, Steve, when I was thinking about this matchup before we came on the air, I was thinking, you know, in a way, these teams match up beautifully with each other. The styles are not that different, to tell you the truth. Um, and I thought this match would be kind of a waiting game. People were going to wait it out. You know, I knew, we all know McNerney's going to come out. And, you know, he'll, he'll, he's willing to lob 450 of the first 451 30, shots he gets. You know, he just wants to, he gets into the matches like that. He just thrives on never missing and getting it in your opponent's head that he is not going to miss. And that wears opponents down mentally as a match goes on. So you can see Patty Alvi Regalado wearing sunglasses. He's got the hat, you know, on the near side. Uh, Jose Salazar is in the deuce court. Alvi Regalado on the ad wearing the hat and sunglasses. It's a really tricky sun. We saw it in the, the women's semifinal before this. Um, I've never seen yep. I've never seen Alvi wear sunglasses, so that's sort of a testament to uh, the the visuals are a little bit tricky today. Well, that's the thing. You get that that sun, and as it's going down here, this is a fierce view from that far side, uh, and that's where you gotta have a hat, like. You know, I don't know how you get out there and don't have a hat on on that side. So much variety. Not only can you know Juan or I by himself really mix up direction, like he changed the change the court there. That was a tricky, tricky move. He was a little bit drifting back in the court, and Salazar was already one step inside the baseline. But McNerney and and Araya just have such a good complement of different options um, with spins and with direction, with pace. Um, they're gonna they're gonna put these guys to the test. Okay, Salazar. Ricolada, Ricolada, three, one, our Ryan McNerney lead. All right, Graham McNerney serving in the near court. Really good roller from Araya there. He, he was so close to the net, and you could see he just let that ball drop, had his paddle set really early, just covered that ball, and got it to die. Unreturnable. Incredible shot. Just missed. Jose Salazar, he has big ground strokes. He doesn't bring him out. He's got a very good return he goes for, but typically from the baseline, he's a little bit more defensive. And there's 30, the athleticism 15. of Alvi Regalado, really looking for the opportunities to move forward, put pressure on his opponents, and uh, did a good job there closing the point out. You know, I was a little concerned with Graham McNerney going into this match without his lucky green headband, but he seems to be doing fine with the black one on, Steve. He is doing fine. You mentioned they're off to a quick start. Another uh, game point here. Um, Graham is Mr. Cool this season, and obviously leading the APT, APTA Cup, he's, uh, he's showing it uh, in every different way with different partners, but... Um, yeah, his demeanor is just about perfect for the game of paddle. Game 
drive at Gary. They lead the first set four games, four games to one. Volley is a proud sponsor of the APTA. As the first AI-enabled training experience, Volley modernizes racket sports by delivering the on-demand dynamic system for live play training and better workouts. Volley creates a community to connect pros and players while giving users personalized performance insights to track progress and customize their practice. Ask your pro about a volley lesson today, and for more information, visit getvolley.com. Steven, you know it's an amazing thing about the men's tour this season. After the Indianapolis event, we have 10 different partnerships who have won the 13 titles on the men's tour. Geron Mitchell stay number one in the country with their win, their first win of the season at an event in Indy. Uh, Fraser Morgan are going to guaranteed number two going into the Nationals thanks to their two tour wins at Medina and Philly Cricket. Um, and then three, four, five, it's all going to come down to this tournament. But an incredible season with so many of the guys playing with all different partners, uh, present, you know, just kind of really mixing up the entire sport this season. Really has been fun to be a fan this season. You know, the, the one tournament I really enjoyed, I think it was the Atlantic Classic, if I'm not mistaken, where there were just, I don't know, a dozen different pairings than we had typically seen. So not only naturally have some teams mix themselves up, you know, you see Mark Powers in the last few weeks, and it uh, looks like he's going to play Nationals with Guillermo Nunez, um, which is, to me, an incredibly exciting matchup. I watched them play earlier today, and... Um, I'm actually really anxious to see what's going on in that other semifinal match. But I agree. It's been a very exciting season, not just because of some of the new faces, but um, I, think, I think the different pairings uh, make every week a little bit more interesting than the one before. I think it's a great experience uh, for these players to actually mix it up because then they get a real sense of, you know, someone who's an, op an opponent and then becomes their partner and then in the future becomes an opponent again. You kind of gain some little insights into situations, what they're comfortable with, maybe, you know, situations that they're not as comfortable. So, it's kind of an interesting play and really fun to watch this season. You know, it's not, as, it's not, as, it's not as relevant for this level of player, but, you know, I captain a team in, in one of the leagues in Baltimore, and people get very comfortable in their partnerships, which are certainly important, but the side they play. I play Deuce, I play Ad. Um, we always try and encourage 15, the learning opportunity, the development opportunity, like, no, switch up your partner, switch up the side of the court, you'll be a more complete player. Um, and to your point, you know, there's also a lot of learning you can do, you know, whether it's at your club or in your league or in these tournaments, it's all the same people you're gonna be competing against and it gives you a chance to sort of see them uh, and how they operate, how they think from the same side of the net. Yeah, and these guys, you know, to your point about People only play one side where all of these guys, these guys are so good, they could play either side of the court and they could probably play lefty. I mean, <laughs> they, they just know the game. They understand the tempo, the timing of it. They've got the rhythm of it. And you can just see, you know, this match is settling in. You know, if anything, I, I feel like Rigolato and Salazar, you know, have a couple looks. They didn't make it yet. I, I feel like, but I said, they're bulletproof score-wise from what I've watched and right now, they're up 4-1, they're down 4-1. I don't really think it matters to them. They're just going to try to work and find out 30. some sequence oh. of shots that will work for them against this opponent and then go with it. Because I think, you know, everybody's got the fundamentals clearly at this level when they walk on the court. And then you've got to you got to really size up your opponents and what they're giving you on a particular day. The temperature changes things, the sun changes things. So I, 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 I feel like they're still trying to figure this out. I feel like Juan and Graham, they're, they're just rock solid. I don't think they have anything to figure out in this match. I think they have a plan and they're executing right now, beautifully. I agree. I'm not sure their matchup in Detroit was sort of the best showing for McNary and Araya. Um, we know from them, you know, how much these big matches mean to them. But uh, I think you're right. Your, your observation that Regalado and Salazar uh, are sort of score agnostic. They're competitors. They're going to dig in. You can see that great camera shot 30, from my pad on the 40. last point. They communicate a lot. They talk during the match. They get frustrated with each other. We see during the match, which I love actually that they, they show. Um, but they are going to be, you know, assuming they don't dig out the set. Game arrived, uh, McNerney. They lead the first set five games to one. So assuming they, they can't make a difference here in the first set, I can tell you 
they're thinking about how they're going to win this, this match 6-4 in the third. Steve, do we have some update, updates on the other semifinal? Did I just see a score run through? Um, you did, um, but as I was speaking, I didn't catch that score. Um, okay. Let me, let me try okay. and get that here. Love 15. I think I saw that uh, in women's so, yeah, play versus Elliott. Yeah, Nunez Powers, it looks like, won that first set 6-4. Okay, and women's play versus Elliott, I think, are up a set on Alexander and Lopez. I think early in the second set in the other women's semifinal. So it's always uh, risky in these situations, Patty, for you and I to look at our phones. But as I just lo looked at my phone to try and get a different update, I unfortunately saw a bunch of texts. And I have three texts that say the exact same thing. Juan Araya is so far the class of the semifinal match. Um, you know, and whether it was the first two games with his cutters to, to win points. Um, if Juan's uh, the only one out here who's a national champ. That makes a difference. He, 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 Juan is just phenomenal, and he's been phenomenal in our sport for 15 years. And, and the guy has won tournaments with more, you know, more players, I think, than anyone I've ever seen in our sport. And I think it's his new camo pants. You know, usually I, I count on Juan to have some shorts, but he's, he's camoed up here this afternoon. The camo pants don't hurt. I've, you know, I've had the pleasure of watching a lot of Juan Araya paddle. He, um, as I think I mentioned to you, he was a partner with my college tennis captain, Jeff Morneau. Um, so it was oh, great for yeah. me to learn a little bit about paddle, watching Jeff and watching him and Juan Araya really dig deep and compete in a lot of uh, national level tournaments uh, a number of years ago. But 15 yeah, that's, you know, that's not something that Small has experienced, but you know he's won on every stage, he's won at every level. Um, I can tell you, I've watched him play a bit this season. He has come out today uh, with his A game for sure. Steve, I've watched him for 15 years. He comes out with his A game all the time. He, he rarely has an off match, I gotta say. That's why it's, you know, when you're watching this, I, I really 15, like to kind of... 30 watch a player and you know Juan invincible until that shot and all of a sudden you see you know all of a sudden you could just feel his disappointment right in that moment he's a passionate oh. player um, but honestly every person who walks on the court against Juan Araya knows you know you you you're gonna have to play a great match to beat him certainly more, then, more passion than just about anybody else on the tour that's for sure Right, and, and he's teamed up with, you know, McNerney, and, and they're a great pairing. Um, because I, th I think they're a great pairing because um, each of them individually, phenomenal. But I just think that Graham, Graham is kind of one of these players who, he, he, he will deliver what is needed in a match. Salazar, Rigolato. McNerney, Araya, lead 5-2. Steve, what I mean by that is, like, I see teams get out there and you see, and you wonder why some teams break through. Some teams seem to get, you know, stagnant. They just get stagnant as a team and they can't get a win over, let's say, a team or two above them in the rankings. And I think that, you know, the, what I am amazed with McNerney's ability is he just can dial up a different style of play. It always comes from never missing. But he can bring some offense if a situation calls for it. I mean, he can't just, he can't over, I've never seen him over, you know, overtake a match with offense. But I've seen him really control the outcome of matches with, you know, a, a blend of just amazing amount of consistent shots and then a little bit of explosiveness and his net play, I mean, he's on top of the net, just rock solid, amazing volleyer, controls play with his overheads. And, you know, just the really an ideal partner for Juan Araya. There's Jose Sal Salazar serving down 2 5. 15 per set. It's actually, yeah, this is actually Alvi Regalado serving. I mean, Alvi, um, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the correction. But a big. There's. A big, a big game, not. Not that they need to sort of win it and work their way back to, to win the first set, but I think that last game, you saw a little more emotion, a little more energy. Um, I think they need to prove to themselves they can kind of compete with what they're, they're facing today, and they can. 
Um, and, uh, 40, love. First miss cutter by Juan Araya. Yep, but I love what I saw from Salazar Regalado right there. They saw Juan set it up. They knew where his paddle was, way behind his head. They saw the grip. They knew it was going to be a drop cutter, and they both took you know off toward the net to get the shot, if it were to be good. I think most players in the sport, you know, a ball bounces, it goes somewhere, then they react, where you can see what makes these guys the top players in the game is they see how their opponents are setting up before they even hit a ball, and they know where that ball's going. So good, good communication calling the balls, but this is one area, when they're at the net, Regalado and Salazar tend to not, right there, they get a little bit close, they tend to not fall into their classical the, the classic positions where, you know, if they're going to the ad side, Jose's really closing on top of the net. Alvi takes the center with his forehand down the middle. Um, their athleticism and their skills compensate for what is sometimes the one area, just like there, they get a little bit too close and sort of compete for similar balls that maybe traditionally should go to one or the other player. Steve, quick shout out. Our buddy abroad, uh, well, we've got lots of different people listening and chiming in. We'll start close by. We'll go up to the coast, Dan McCormick. we got Griffin Kramer enjoying the action, Connor Fitzgerald. Uh, any questions you want to ask, Yay, throw them in the chat. See McGee, if we can answer them. Orion, eight, five games to three. So I, I do think that was, this is huge right here for, um, for Alvi and Jose. Um, because I, th I just think you got to make a statement, even if uh, McNerney holds serve here, McNerney and Araya. Uh, now I feel, I feel like Salazar and Regalado are, are like it's sort of, star they're starting to feel it a little bit here. And, and the reason why they're not feeling it yet is Juan and, and Graham have not given them much to really kind of formulate and like build points that much. They're dictating play you know, as the net team. They, they just we talk played, about, you know, whether, yeah. I, heard you, I heard you guys talking a little bit earlier about, you know, Vera was commenting on the women's match and so she always tells the team to return serve. I, I kind of will disagree with Vera, she's a great commentator, but I, I think at a lot of levels, there's a huge advantage to being at the net. I always feel like if the ball doesn't have to bounce in front of me and I get to hit it, it's easier for me to win a point than for you. Love and they're like 15. one missed, going for a lot, probably wasn't the ideal time to try that shot. Um, but I, th I just think it's an interesting thing. Ball was out. Whoops. Wait, Love one second. 30. This is fascinating right here because I just consider McNerney rock solid on her ser serving games in this situation, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something just changed there. Kind of weird. Well, you know, it's... It's a momentum game. Uh, yeah. The beginning of this match, they played flawlessly, Juan and Graham. And, you know, I think there have been now three missed cutters in a row by Juan. You, you mentioned Graham's uh, fault there that's not sort of a traditional 15, uh, mistake he would make, certainly in a critical time. Um, but, you know, this is paddle. Like the matches ebb and flow, momentum shifts back and forth. Um, certainly, Regalado and Salazar have a little bit of confidence, but honestly, McNary and Araya have sort of let their foot off the gas a little bit. Can we talk about, um, you, you mentioned that Regalado and uh, Salazar will cover the net differently. Like, we'll see different formations, and there's no one way to skin a cat. Um, and... You know, typically the player to the left of the two right here. You know, you can see if the ball's up in between, maybe that player will take more of the shots. These guys, will they're kind of indifferent to it and kind of like playing the They don't care what the score is, and I feel like they don't care who hits the ball. I, I think some teams get frustrated if they get out of a tempo and maybe the wrong person is hitting the ball. These guys, it doesn't phase them. So I don't think it actually is a negative. Un uh, uh, you know, until unless another team can figure out a way to capitalize on it, and I've not seen another team capitalize on it yet this year, to tell you the truth. 
totally it. agree. And that's, that's, I guess, the biggest sort of takeaway from, while it may be a little bit unorthodox, they play the points, right? They play every point for its own point, and um, nobody's really found a way to sort of make it, you know, an advantage. They can't take the net away from them. Um, they end up, you know, covering the court fine, and, you know, they have this great defensive sort of push volley that resets the the point. So unless it's a weakness, it's not a weakness, and I think, yeah, I think you're spot on there, Patty. Well, I've just seen over the years, you, you see someone like when Erdoya and Burris won men's nationals, you know, Erdoya hit more forehand volleys than most people. Just, and you know, uh, Durant, known for hitting a ton of aggressive first volleys. Because they're that good and they can flip their paddle and get away with it, most times, club level players who PTIs are, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond, they don't have that anticipation. They don't have the racket skills. They don't have the timing. So they don't get away with it. But I just think at the top level, these guys can do whatever they want for the most part. Doesn't hurt them. And, you know, women's play, it's a little different. You don't have the height. Graham McNerney, he could hit a, you know, stupid shot out here. But, you know, the guy's like 6'3". I don't know. He seems taller when I look at him. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he's up there, so he can get away with it. He can hit shots all over and, you know, hit something that maybe, you know, you and I would never get away with hitting. And we might really hurt our partner if we hit the shot. You know, these guys hit shots and they know their partners pick up on that shot instantly and, you know, go to the spot where they anticipate the next ball's coming. 40, so 30. good communication, though. I think it more scared Regalado, uh, that sort of call out that McNerney was coming towards the net than uh, alerted him to it. Game so. of Ryan McNerney. They win the first set, six games to three. We will be right back in just a moment after these messages right here on the APTA YouTube channel presented by My Paddle. guys, my name is Thomas Nolan. I'm going to give you a little tip about lobbing today. Lobbing is a huge part of the game, which more people should do. And I find that people's grips are usually a little bit off when lobbing. I always like to tell people when they are about to lob, open up your racket face as early as you can. Whether you're playing off the screen or off the deck. So as soon as you go back for the lob, make sure you have that racket face wide open and throw that lob up as high as you can. Hope you guys enjoyed this tip. Welcome back to the APTA Tour. We are um, in men's semifinal action from Manufacturers uh, Club in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. I'm Patty Hogan with Steve Sullivan. We just saw Graham, Graham McNerney and Juan Arayo take the first set, 6-3, over Alvi Rigolato and Jose Salazar. Steve, what are your thoughts on that first set? Well, it was... Uh, I mean, we covered it. I yeah. got your thoughts as I was going along. I don't mean that, Steve. What, what do you think's got to change in the second set here for Salazar Rigolato? You got anything? Um, if if they, not, I, make it up. No, I, I, will. I, I think there were a couple too many mistakes. That the beginning of the match was the difference in the first set. I mean, Juan Araya played flawlessly. Graham always plays sort of flawlessly. But Juan Araya had multiple kill shots to win games. Um, his cutter was in full force. Um, I think the first or the three quarters of that first set, they were outplayed. The, the Regalas, our team, so to speak, they were outplayed. Um, they dug in a little bit towards the end of the set, um, and I think they just need to extend points. They, it was sort of a fast set for the typical pace that these two have been playing. So I think they need to slow it down. I think they need to get deeper into the point. They have the offense. They just need to pick and choose the right opportunity to use it. Yeah, spot on, Steve. I, I, I like what you just said about like, the pace of play, and it's fascinating because if you told me it was a fast-paced match, who would that favor? I'd almost think Salazar Rigolato, but here it is, McNerney and Orion. And, you, and you're right. I, I thought that first set would last an hour and a half, and it 
<laughs> it wasn't even close. Well, this has been not a new dynamic, but I, I would say Short Hills, it was, uh, I think, a four-hour semifinal and a three-hour final, if I'm not mistaken. 30, Just an 15. unbelievable trend of slow, steady, consistent, error-free paddle that's pushing these matches to the limit. One of the unique things today, it didn't really come into play. Patty, I may have missed. Did we have a deuce, a deuce point in that first set? Um, I'm not sure we had one, but, you know, today, the no ad scoring is going to, you know, hopefully limit, you know, match length. But this has been a little bit of, uh, you know, the challenges of some of these people playing four matches a day when some of them go three or four hours. I think you're right. I don't think we had it. A third set, you know, I mean, a three all game. Um, which is an interesting twist. And I think it's a good thing to try in tournaments. I don't know. I kind of feel like semis finals could be regular scoring. Um, I don't mind the length of matches and, you know, when you're out there and you're playing, it's moving the chess pieces around and, you know, Mark Powers said something fascinating to me at Short Hills. He was getting ready to go on the court for the finals. And I, I said something to him about the length of that semifinal that he played and uh, his win over Frazier and Morgan. And I said four hours and Powers was like, I didn't realize it was four hours. <laughs> I did because I was watching. Uh, you know, I may have done, you know, the dishes in the middle. I may have done a load of laundry in the middle. I, I think I uh, took my dog for a I walk in I the middle of that yeah. match. Um, but right. I noticed it, and I think, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a day I'm like today is a marathon. Right. I'm saying sometimes as a player you get in these matches and you don't even really think about it that way, where when you're a viewer and a spectator, you think more about the length of it. I think when you're out there playing, you're just a player. You love this, and you know this is this is what you know. When they were kids, they didn't dream of playing platform tennis, but they dreamed of being amazing rackets players in tennis at that point in time. And then they all have come into the sport of platform tennis, and you know the game is just continuing just to improve the athleticism, the shot making, and just you know the the players' abilities, like these new young guys, to instantly get the game within the game and really limit unforced errors and, you know, be highly, highly competitive, not <laughs> a great team instantly. Like, it, it's just astounding to me. I was talking earlier, and I kind of stopped at the chat about return to serve. You know, what's the benefit? I think for a lot of players, if you're not playing against someone who has a crushing return to serve, it's to your benefit to get to the net and be the net. I think it's much harder, especially as the weather gets colder, win points from the baseline. 30, Absol absolutely, 40. I agree. So today's an interesting day. It started off wet. Um, I think the early matches, I got to Philly Cricket at about 8.30. It was drizzling, the courts were wet. It was incredibly cloudy and overcast um, and windy. So the, the weather is actually probably 10 degrees warmer. The sun's out, the courts are dry. Um, you saw in the last point a couple yeah. transitions uh, where that ball is really coming fast off the screen. I think you're right. The you know the speed of the ball can influence you know how much a returner or the people at the baseline have or don't have an advantage. Hey Steve, I got a true or false for you. All right, what do you George got? Wash George Washington was on the ground where this court is, where this match is being played. True or false? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean true, right? We're in Fort Washington. I know there's just so much history. I lived in Philadelphia for a few years and uh, enjoyed it myself. So I'm going to go with true. Game, Araya McTierney. They lead the second game. Second set, 1-0. You are right. Uh, Washington established the uh, White Marsh encampment here. The Continental Army, Army spent six weeks um, here protecting supplies. Um, whoops, sorry. Sorry, Steve, here they go. So, so he was here. I mean, this place is historic in nature. It, it's a beautiful club, the whole surround. It's just part of this Philadelphia paddle community. Scott Falatak is our director of this tournament, I believe. I think he played in the... The event, we have a couple of events going on here, the men's and women's and an NRT men's event as well. And uh, Fally, as we know him, great job. 
uh, he was over at Philly Cricket and really a part of, you know, this recent surge again in Philly Paddle and Philly Paddle. We saw in the umpire Hall of Famer Tim McAvoy up in the chair calling that women's match that you were on earlier, Steve. Um, you know, Philadelphia Paddle is just awesome. And I think as the afternoon goes on, you're going to, the crowd's going to gather here because they know the sport. They love it. They've got the fire pits. They got the bar. They got food everywhere. Just super the hospitable environment well, here. Welcoming. You know, it's all about Philadelphia Paddle for me. You know, part of why I just got hooked to this game. Well, years and years ago. It's amazing, Patty. We have two competing crowds, and I'm not sure if you just heard the yell from inside the hut. There's an inside crowd and an outside crowd watching uh, Macy Elliott and Lynn Burris. Uh, they're up a set, and I think 5-3, um, I might have seen there, uh, in the second. And the crowd watching this match, there's probably 100, uh, maybe 75 people outside. There's fire pits, there's food. Um, this is a very energetic crowd. 30, and there's, there's un, you know, unfortunately, and from one respect, there's three unbelievable matches happening at the same time. Yeah. It's like watching U.S. Open tennis, only it's platform tennis. I mean, that's the amazing thing. Everywhere you turn, just incredible athletes to watch. Elliot and Burris up a set, I think, uh, game away from the match against Alexan um, and Lopez, I 40, think. 50. Yes. And like we said, this match has huge consequences for Araya and McNerney. You know, they're trying to get through this match. They're hoping to win and get themselves top four in the country going into nationals. And uh, Alvi and Jose are doing everything they can to try to keep them out, which would do a favor for Humphrey Sosa's Koning, who you know, currently sit number four and are in, you know, semi-final action themselves. A lot of offense, a lot of defense in this point. Clearly both teams realizing the importance. Interesting, you see a riot. You saw McNerney leave the whole picture altogether. Um, you know, he thought that there was going to be a shot fired, and a riot just held his ground 30. and rallied the ball. I, this match just feels like this is a riot McNerney. They're kind of like reeling them in. I feel like they have a, a fishing pole. The line's going out, and then they're kind of reeling them in. Well, they have not only every shot, but they have the most capable defense as well. Nice Certainly, who would like to receive? Here we go, the first deuce point. So the rule is receiver's choice. They're going to go uh, to Jose in the deuce. Yeah, you see McNerney and Araya always set themselves up, yeah. typically with Araya to the player to the left, yeah. handling more of the, you know, the high ones. And when you have someone like Graham, who can be on top of the net at 6-3 or 4, you know, it's phenomenal. They've got most shots covered. Go. Holy cow, what a read on that shot. And Salazar just to get up there and hit, hit a little pickleball shot there. Kept it down low and then retreated right back to the baseline. The and we start again. Dink, yeah, the dink has a play and paddle as well. And not surprisingly, the deuce point, right? So this point wins the game. Uh, having multiple changes in sort of offense and defense. Right, it's what you would expect. And this is a great thing for those of you watching from home. You know, this point is so critical, obviously, but when you get to three all, it's a really good thing to practice no ad scoring because it does put huge importance on the very next point for both teams. And the more that you get used to playing with that feel of the pressure of that moment, 
you know, that's going to help you improve as a player. Yeah, playing under pressure, playing when it matters. These guys thrive in this environment, but um, I love it. I think it adds to the game, certainly in early rounds. I think it's a great potential addition to sort of eliminate a four-hour match in a round of 16 of a tournament. But um, this is, uh, yeah, this is what these guys play for. But it's a huge difference, 2-0 versus 1-all. Um, super important for both teams. Uh, Kier, um, Lynn Burks and Macy Elliott have pulled out their semifinal match. They uh, defeated Alexandre and Lopez and will face Morgan Sakura in the women's final at the completion of this match. In the men's other semifinal, Powers and Nunez won the first set 6-4 and are at 4-all second set against uh, number four seeded team of Chris Humphreys and Felipe Osiscone. I am incredibly curious to see how that pairing of Powers and Nunez goes. I think, uh, you know, Guillermo Nunez, one of the, you know, other, you know, big, you know, guys to come on the scene this year. He's a lefty. He's got unbelievable sort of touch, not only, you know, big racket skills, but, uh, you know, shorter in stature. I think he is probably about 5'7". Um, he can hit every shot and is a lefty. You know, he has, he's one of the people that hasn't really fell into one natural pairing. He's played with everybody this year. He's probably, if I was to guess, had more different partners than anyone else. Um, but I'm super excited to see how they do, not only today, but in nationals. Yeah, Guillermo's in here with uh, Jose and Alvi and this group. They kind of mix it up among themselves a little bit there. And Mark Powers and, and anybody is all you need to know. Uh, Mark, long time, great partnership with John Hughes, former national champs, finalist the following year after they won nationals. So Powers is very used to playing with the lefty. John Hughes is doing a lot, having a lot of fun with his little kids and we hope to see him back on the tour in the future. And in case anybody forgot, we're still in the same point. It's 1-0 and deuce. So this is a sudden death point. Three all, sometimes we call it when we do uh, no ad scoring. Um, but uh, this is a huge point, and uh, we're probably at the five minute mark. <laughs> so as much as the game changes, it stays the same. Here we have critical point, and they're playing, I hate to put it in quotes, old school paddle. That This is kind of what happens. Everybody will slow it down, slow it down. No one really wants to risk because they, they know how critical the point this is really early in this second set. Yeah, Salazar and Reglada are doing a really good job of just really giving McNerney and Araya nothing on the baseline. Um, you know, at some point I'd, I'd be curious if they just like laid one on there for someone to take a rip because they seem to be able to defend any drive that I've seen hit to them this year. <laughs> One of the strategies that they seem to be in, you know, imploring in the last tournament was when they were the net hitting shorter volleys to purpose. somewhat purposefully get the other team to drive. Their, their volleys are so good. Um, they almost attempted to sort of create that uh, defensive but offensive sure, volley opportunity. Sure, you force the action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, got, you, you just say, all right, let me try something else. And here we go again. You know, that was a great lob McNerney had earlier. Came in, had a blitz. They go back again. Really good job of digging out all those spin overheads. Juan Looking into the sun yeah. and handling the Araya spins. He just, Juan has just such a classic setup that sort of, as, you know, sometimes you call it that Statue of Liberty setup that you teach people on the serve, but he can hit so many different shots from sort of the, the slide volley to the big cutter that he has to the ultimate sort of uh, slash cut, you know, kill shot. But um, I don't see that shot coming out. I'd like to be proven wrong here. Oh. 
Right there, Greg Legato got two looks in a row from that ad court. And he just tested the volleying skill. He, he didn't try to hit a winner, he just hit it. McNerney handled it. And we go again. And around and around, the cycles repeat. Oh! Let's listen. One, one. How can you overrule that? How can you overrule that? You cannot overrule that. Everyone sees it out. I hate that good blind people as umpires. Every time. All right, so just to reset, I think the discussion's gone, but the lob by, I think it might have been Jose, over the head of Graham McNerney. Ball's called out. Umpire overruled it after a 10-minute hundreds of shot point to put us at one all. I said things that's remarkable about Salazar and Regalado is how they don't, you know, the score doesn't phase them. This is going to be a critical moment right here for Araya McNerney. They obviously disagreed with that overrule call. Um, and right here, they have to hit delete. And like Vera said earlier, be like goldfish, six seconds, forget about it. Didn't happen and move on. Because they are still dictating this match. The, and, the, you know, they, I think they control the outcome of this match. Totally agree. Not only is the uh, Ted Lasso sort of mental logic, you know, right, but this is this is what separates good teams from great teams is the ability to just sort of move on, play every point individually, um, don't overthink the score, don't overthink, you know, doing too much, and uh, this is a critical game. And that's just a great shot, unreturnable shot. Oof. Starting to feel, Steve, like this is, things are going to speed up a little bit. I feel like Rigolato and Salazar are kind of feeling something here. And I, I, I think for them, they, they would benefit with a little bit of speeding up the tempo slightly, I think. I think so. They like the energy of a fast-paced match. Alvi Regalado thrives on, you know, when his athleticism. Unbelievable Good shot table. by Graham McNerney. Um, yeah, great drop. But I think you're right. I still am going to say Juan Arai and Graham McNerney are in control. They're still sort of the better team. Um, but momentum can, you know, change very quickly in this sport. So let's see if... Uh, Juan and Graham can sort of settle down after a tough, tough 30, overrule 15. from the umpire. See right there, McNerney didn't hit a terrible shot, but he then missed a volley. Like all of a sudden, I'm just saying, I, I feel like Alvi and Jose are feeling it a little bit. And I kind of, Steve, I don't know, are you a hockey fan? Sure. I feel like you need shots on goal. You can't score and win hockey games unless you get shots on goal. And I, I, I just kind of feel like in this match, a Salazar, and uh, Rigolato, I feel like they can push the envelope a little bit, and I want them to test McNerney and, and Araya's volleys a little bit. Araya and McNerney are very comfortable laying back and just handling 1,000 lobs. I think it benefits Salazar and Rigolato big time to kind of force, the, force it a little bit, a little bit more. Who's your favorite hockey team? 
Well, you know, family's from New England, so I think uh, I tend to follow some of the teams my parents grew up loving, so the Boston Bruins are one. But I'm from Baltimore, so I'm a Ovechkin fan, and the Caps are uh, my local team, so maybe it's a pick in between those two. Gotcha. Going to Providence College, part of the Hockey East, it was a... Uh, Great opportunity with a rink on campus to see uh, amazing hockey every week all winter long. Speaking of Providence College, Carrie Delmonico, didn't she go there? You know what? I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm telling you, I, I have information. Not only did Carrie go to Providence, she played tennis and basketball. Super impressive. Jeff Morneau is a tennis hall of famer at Providence College. Big inspiration for me. Carrie, Hall of Fame hair, Providence College. <laughs> you know, Patty, you, you mentioned speeding up the pace. It seems like the the pace is speed, has sped up a bit, but the points are longer. I don't know how those two things can be true at the same time, but it seems like there's a little more energy. Um, Here's that, that time where these two sort of go for the same ball. Um. Right, and that's the lob when it comes out of the deuce court from McNerney, let's call it, where he can really, he has an opportunity to kind of catch those guys and, and make them make a late decision sometimes, it appears. He doesn't necessarily follow in with a blitz because he really can't because those guys could just knock a tar out of an overhead. <coughs> and he could get hurt. So you, you, you made a very good point when I sort of talked about their positioning and them competing for balls at times. Uh, this morning at Philly Cricket in between matches, Alvi and Jose, but it was mainly Alvi, was asking Macy Elliott for advice. And they were talking about her roller that they really like, but they were also just looking for Macy's opinion on where they can improve. And this is one thing that Macy called out very openly and honestly, like, you know, you guys sometimes get in awkward positions, but it doesn't hurt you. Um, it's very tough when you have a team as good as, you know, 40, either of these 15. two, but, you know, a top team in the country to give advice. Um, but I think, I think there's still more upside for these two. Hey, here's the deal. They've been playing together for a year. <laughs> they're upside. I mean, gigantic. I think they're only really starting to tap into what they will become as a team eventually, which is hard to believe because they're that good already. But I loved your comment earlier on this being um, to the Macy Regular Elliott. Auto. They lead the second set, two games to one. To the thing, to Macy's comment with these guys. And, you know, the thing about platform tennis is unique and doesn't exist in other racket sports. You know, I can't think of one time I ever played a college tennis match, a tennis match anywhere, where a future opponent would talk to me about what they thought I had to do to get better, where the sport of platform tennis, you know, I got better because I had the opportunity to go and play against you know, hall, future Hall of Fame players who just would say, oh, Patty, you know, I played you and I knew you, you hit the stupidest shot when it's three all in the third set. Why, why, what were you even thinking? And I was like, hey, I wasn't really thinking. And, and like the game comes to so many people and it's shared among the top players. And that's, I think, what is so unique about the sport of platform tennis. You know, for the most part, people, people are really giving of their knowledge and, you know, everybody who's gotten pretty good in this game it's it's because they played matches and then they hung out after and had a couple beers and they talked paddle and I learned a tremendous amount about the sport from so many people you know before me and I'm still learning all the time just watching you know the new athleticism come into it and just that court coverage and how like these guys are immune to the spin you know people can't handle the spin Steve, for the most part let me, let me just reset the audience um, in the changeover, Juan Araya came storming into the, the hut, asking Jackie from the APTA to sort of come out and give support or give an opinion to that very critical overrule. Um, so this this has not left the brain. Um, no, Juan, you can tell, is, Steve. Yeah, he's upset. Right, you could tell, and that's why oh, no, that point. Jackie's going to change the referee. I mean, it's, it, seems that, it seems that Juan has asked for a change of referee, if I have this right. 
but let's let's give it a second listen. Pardon me? It was a critical, critical call. I wish I had seen the replay, Steve. I'm not sure it was on camera. My point, I'm, I'm I couldn't not tell. sure it was on camera. I, I it may have just kind of come on as a change of the change of view. I didn't see it. Yes. I can request. Have a problem? I can oh, request. I have a problem, but I don't want to stop the match right now. So no, maybe we we're changing the match and jump. We're changing the referee. Okay. I couldn't care less, but I don't want to stop right now. I and I don't understand why no, he, keep going. When he gets what he wants. No, no, no. I yeah, requested. Yeah. <laughs> we keep going. One, two. I don't understand if you request why you get to draw. Just he? Yes. Don't let him in. Remember when I said I felt that this match was Raya McNerney's to control? I, I, I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like I feel like Juan's starting to lose it here. And you could see McNerney kind of... He wasn't going to tell Juan what to do because Juan's an adult and Graham's an adult and he's got to handle himself out here in the circumstance. But I, I feel that McNerney just wanted to pull, pull him back and... and disengage with uh, Jose there. 100%. When Juan came into the hut, I sort of had one eye outside on Graham. Uh, oh, let's go. Yeah, I, I agree. They need to get back in sync. And um, that's, a, that's a tough point to lose. I'm not going to say he's lost it yet, but I think you're right. There's a huge risk here that... Uh, he loses track of what's most important. Love 30. When I said it a little while ago where I felt like the pace of play was speeding up and that was what I thought Salazar and Regalado wanted and I feel that's very much what's going on right now. So uh, this, I, this I believe, be an thing. yeah, it's interesting. I believe Juan has requested a change and Jose was very vocal about uh, disrupting the flow of the match, right? And of course they had the momentum. Uh, Jose's pushback was, you can't stop us in the middle of the match and just completely uh, delay progress. And, and it seems like they're playing and it's not clear to me if it appears there may be a search going on in the crowd for an alternate umpire, believe it or not. Maybe, maybe. Steve, you know what I always say, like, I don't think anybody gets out there and makes calls on purpose. Juan and Graham saw it. You know, they were convinced the ball was out. The other two guys saw it and they were convinced it was good. And so you have a difference of opinion. So it's it's kind of a bummer that it's kind of has changed the entire match right now. That oh, one and call. I, I actually think the call itself is irrelevant. I don't think either team has any animosity towards the other team related to the call. I think they do not. Yeah, they, they do this, not. This sport, I mean, this sport is one of the mo yes. truest, honest, yeah, I didn't imply jovial no. um, right. games I've ever played. And it's just the uniqueness oh. of how the umpire saw it differently. Um, and from that position, made a very impactful call. And you hate to see an umpire change the course of the match. And okay, it's still, let's call it a little bit early in the second, but uh, boy, what a critical. See? What a critical change James of momentum. Salazar, Ray Regalado, they lead the second set three games to one. And instead of thinking about overhead placement there, he just hit the ball and boom, he missed a volley. And total momentum swing here. Y yep, he's, he's a little bit out of his own head at the moment. Wait, 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 wait. We weren't even ready. But we're not talking. You know, thanks to that on-court mic, we get to hear all the sound effects from the manufacturer's club. Yep, this is a 4D experience at the moment. And it is getting a little punchy between the players. Um, 
I've been around a long time, Steve. I get, I'll call it, <laughs> I'll call it, it is punchy between the players a little bit. I don't like to highlight that, but they're not aggravated with each other. But now the situation is becoming so intense that it is punchy between them. And Salazar, I think he has a point. You can't disrupt the flow of the match and call for a different umpire. Um, you know, that, that would be tough. I can't say I've seen that happen before. Have you ever seen that, Steve? No, I... We had a very unique situation. Uh, we've had some situations where the scoring's been a little bit, you know, missed. Or um, I know it was an event at the Philly Cricket uh, Grand Prix earlier in the season, but nothing to the point where I've seen a player demand a, a change in umpire. Um, so that's that's a new one right now. Right. Salazar Rigolato. They lead the second set four games to one. In collaboration with the APTA, Fusion is at the forefront of personalized gear and apparel. Backed by a team of seasoned industry experts, we provide exclusive access to high-end products from top-tier retail brands, all poised for customization with your club logo, team name, or corporate branding. Our streamlined approach guarantees a hassle-free shopping experience, complemented by custom online storefronts and swift ordering. Visit www.gearbyfusion.com and let Fusion seamlessly weave your branding into elite merchandise. So, Rigolato and Salazar have themselves a 4-1 lead here, Steve, in the second set. Total change of momentum. Um, right now, I need I need Juan, I need Graham McNerney. He's got to figure out how to talk to Araya right here and get him settled down. Juan is Juan's losing it. So, I, you know, Patty, I agree, and it's interesting to me that they're not talking. They're a little bit... You know. Well, you can't. You know, Steve, yeah. you, you, these guys have both played a million tournaments. And, you know, Graham, Graham's kind of wise the way he's playing this. But I almost would just, like, slow down play between points. I might tie my sneaker once or twice. I might, I'm Graham, adjust my headband. I don't know. Just something to sort of give them a little bit more time in between points and shots here. I think Juan needs the time to simmer. You know, and they're just hitting over to McNerney. McNerney's not going to risk anything right now. He's just going to hit a million balls back in play. And then I think they'll test Juan and see if he can keep it together. So new ball, every seven games they're switching to a new ball. So that's 14 games. Um, yeah, I agree, slowing it down. Um, you could see a little bit of a, uh, that's a tough mess. You can see the frustration from Jose Salazar in the last game when Juan and Graham weren't ready to play at his pace. So I, th I think I'm in agreement with you. Do something to sort of reset. Well, I'm not sure they're going to mentally be able to reset here before the second set is gone. I don't, I don't feel that way. And if they do lose the set, McNerney and Araya, I, I would hope one of them would leave the court and just like get a little change of scenery and try to come back with a, a new mental <laughs> effort here. <laughs> or, you know, they've got to fortify themselves mentally here. This is purely a mental moment that's going on, and it's not going well for them. Just, just missed. Graham went for a sort of an inside-out roller there. Oh, I'm sorry. Thirty, wow. forty. Great return to serve. You saw the move in from Rigolato and McNerney just held that volley to the last second, put it behind him. Phenomenal volley right there. Forty, all. 
So here we go. Will it be like the last <laughs> three all point and go on for 10 minutes? All right, our, is this our second deuce point, Patty? I believe so. Yeah, I think it's just our second. Must have point for McNerney and Araya. Regalado is absolutely looking for opportunities. He did a great job, so we're just deflecting that bullet from Wanaraya to stay in the point. Regalado is doing a phenomenal job in that ab court. this point from McNerney and Araya. McNerney's getting a decent amount of hit, which I think is good. We want a little pulling off time. Yeah, I, I like the pace of Juan's balls as well. I think Juan may be settling down a little bit. He just went through a 10-minute you know, period where he was uh, swinging a little bit recklessly at the ball, but I, I like the pace. But you're right, Alvi Regalado is uh, a digging machine at the moment. Great patience. They even got a seamer on that last one, and Alvi just sort of, you know, played it the right way. But we're almost four minutes into this point. They got to be careful here. There's a lot of shots going over Salazar's forehand in that juice court, which makes me a little nervous for McNerney and Araya. You can really see Alvi Regalado just opens up that face of the paddle. So, oh. Game, Arroy McNerney, Salazar Regalado needs a second set, four games to two. Great, great point. You said must win point. A very. That point was. Yeah. That, that one point was worth two games, it seems, mentally, for Orion. Yeah, I think I just McNerney saw Juan a take a deep way. breath. I think I saw him take a deep breath, which is probably half for respiratory reasons, the other half for mental reasons. Graham got the one he wants. I like the look. He just dismissed it. I <laughs> like that from a ride. That's a nutmeg by uh, Alvi to Juan there. 15 all. And that's the trick with a that shot is a how- A nutmeg, yeah. Steve? Yeah, right between I've the legs. It's a, that's the classic soccer nutmeg. 
I mean. Oh, I understand now. This is the this is the toughest shot to I defend, understand. and the less you can move, and it's just a master class by Juan. The the less you move, the more prepared you are to chase it down. This big, you know, whatever we call that shot, the acronym shot. Um, just, just felt it's yeah. like a wicked attack overhead. Yeah. We don't have to dance around it. They just hit the you know what out of the ball, yeah. um, and it's typically hit. <laughs> You know, it, it's super effective in some matches, not as effective in other matches. Uh, we've seen Durant, you know, bring that shot into the game, among others. Brian Uline going way back. It's it's phenomenal, complimentary type of overhead to a player's game. And it's harder to hit than people think. 30 off. All right, big, big point to sort of claw their way back. Took a couple games, but perhaps Juan has uh, moved, moved on. to Mike Raleigh running Team Nationals from the Exmoor Club outside Chicago. Mike's heard the fireworks. He's, he went outside his paddle hut and he heard Juan yelling. So he, he tuned in the action so he could see it. And uh, Steve, do you have your team ready for Team Nationals in New Jersey? You coming up? Uh, there's still some team formations in the works. Baltimore is going to have a huge showing. Um, awesome. I think uh, awesome. whether it's with teammates of clubs or across clubs, you know, aligning to the, I think now this year they're recommending a 10 to 15 point PTI Salazar, se separation. The second set, four games to three. Um, so yeah, there's lots of excitement around team nationals every year, more and more team, both men and women have been going and uh, certainly when it's biggest on the event, East Coast. Yeah. yeah, biggest event in our sport. Last year we had over 800 players. Uh, Mike was the guy who started it going. Uh, kudos to Greg Morgan, who's doing a phenomenal job handling uh, this year. It will be the men who will come up, hosted by Canubra Country Club and all the other clubs in the area. And uh, in between, we have Boston Nationals before that. Next weekend, Junior Nationals. And I just have to put in a pitch to all the Jersey pros who do a phenomenal job. Steve helping me run Junior Nationals every year. They work as hug commanders. They help the kids manage through difficult situations and really help the kids get a great handle on the lifetime sport of platform tennis. And all the clubs in our area are amazing in their generosity of opening their doors to the greatest players around the country. So thanks to all the clubs, all the players, all the pros, all the volunteers. It's just an amazing effort to pull off these events. And one other shout out to Jackie Cameron, who you saw on camera there handling the fireworks. Jackie knows how to put out flames. She's remarkable in her leadership that she provides to the APTA tour. And, you know, she handles a lot of really fun situations. And then she gets to handle all the nasty ones as well. And she handles them with equal grace. And we kudos to uh, Jackie Cameron for all of her efforts. Yeah, so Steve, this is awesome, the comeback for Araya McNerney. I'm glad that they put that aside. They are back in the set. Uh, Salazar Viglato, you know, up 4 3 here. But. Now the match feels like the match felt, you know, toward the end of that first set where it became very competitive. Um, and then it just swayed way over to Alvi and Jose. And now I feel like uh, Juan, Juan's got everything in check. His moody's over and they're back to playing platform tennis. Yeah, that last shot, a roller from the ad down the line to spin into the side screen and die before it gets to the back screen was one of the filthiest rollers I've ever seen. I think Juan's back. Oh, McNerney can't believe he missed it. He had great play, good transition moment. He was coming up. Always a little dangerous when you fire that ball as a drive off that screen. 
where you are vulnerable to a drop shot. Graham was looking for it, just didn't pull it off. Nice patient reset. Regalazar returned to the net. Juan and Graham, you know, settle back into their more comfortable sides. And uh, now let's play the point. Another shout out to, I think, he looks like a distant cousin of, Ho of Jose Salazar, CEO of APTA, Amin Kaduri. Join the action and uh, appreciating all four players on the court and especially appreciating the leadership Jackie Cameron provides. Don't you think he looks a little like Salazar from a distance? I think when Amin goes short with that hair and Jose goes short, kind of have a little bit of a resemblance. There you go. I, great leadership from Amin, but uh, the tournaments I've been exposed to so far this year, Jackie and Cindy and the entire APT crew, including Ann Waldron, uh, unbelievable support and leadership, putting on, like we just saw, at times what can be some, some stressful moments during these tournaments, but uh, huge respect to all the players, show them week in and week out. Steve, nobody in the chat has questions for us, but I love that they have questions for each other in there. It's great. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple of guys in there doing a wonderful job of handling all the questions going through the chat. Shout out to another Hall of Famer, David Chelson, up in Maine, enjoying the action. Molly. So Patty, how do you how do you see this game? Who is it more important for? It, and it may I'm sort of curious how you see the momentum and the sort of the position of maybe the last game versus the last uh, seven games. Where where does this game matter more? Oh. Juan and Graham are still winning 15, this match. 30. So I'm going to say it matters more to Sal Salazar and Michael Ladder. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. Other than the little melt up. Uh, around the controversial call. I think Juan and Graham are still winning this match, uh, albeit it's, you know, perhaps leaning towards a third set. But um, other than a couple moments in time, I think they've played better. Um, but I would say we're not done yet. Phenomenal job from that juice court from Salazar 30. there. Oh. But he but he went for the rip, and Araya, I don't know if Jose hadn't noticed, but Juan never moved. He just was flat-footed, standing on top of the net, and his hands are way too good to drive that ball. Yep, oh. totally agree. Yo. and Powers defeated Humphreys uh, and Osis Conan. 6-4-7-5 in the other semifinal. Uh, which means Humphreys and Osis Conan, I think, go into Nationals in number five seed, slipping down a notch from number four. And I think, uh, so McNerney, Araya, these two teams are definitely top four. Look like teams number three and four going into Nationals. Uh, Duran and Mitchell and Fraser Morgan have secured the number one and two seats. 30, and Patty, 40. it sounds small, 
but the difference between being the third or fourth seed and the fifth or sixth seed based on that quarterfinal match is huge, right? This is a big, it's a big small difference if I was to sort of characterize it. Sure, when they pull names out of the hat, you have your number one and two seeded team and number seven and eight in the country come out against them. Five and six will play against three and four. And, you know, the APTA does that. So, you know, every notch up in the rankings can be hugely significant. But I think Humphreys versus Koning, you know, this is the first time they're out of the top four. You know, last year they won a couple of tour events, were on the rise. This year they yes. seem to have hit a wall a little bit. I've had some good results, but uh, they, they are now will be number five going into nationals. And we have our third, no add point. How long will this one go on? Another 10 minutes, Steve? Let's see. Come on! Or not. Or two shots. Four all second set. Wow. I didn't see the Again, comeback like coming. I uh, <laughs> I didn't see it, and the people who were texting me didn't see it coming. But all the credit to Juan and Graham, who just sort of slowed things down, got through it, worked through it. Um, yeah, they and remember how missing. to volley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know, they just they just were a little bit brain dead there, and they were having moodies, and were caught off the net, flat footed on their heels, missed volleys. You know, Salazar and Rigolato were taking it to them, and then all of a sudden, they're in perfect position and just made some key volleys there. We're at four all, semifinals. Philly Open, Manufacturers Club, in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. And the crowd's growing. The, the women's final, I believe, is up next. Uh, inside oh, the hut, outside the hut, that you can see in the back backdrop there, some of the crowd. Um, that's only a piece of it. So this is going to be a great scene tonight for the you know, end of this match and the women's final to come next. Shout out to Charles Bono. Bono, he's a longtime member of Manufacturers. Moved away from Philly, but I'm sure he's enjoying the action from afar. I think he's out west now. Really tough after three unbelievably long, hard-fought games to sort of claw their way back to four all. Uh, three really short points. And sometimes that's what happens, Steve. You battle, 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 work your you-know-what off to get even, and then all of a sudden you, you know, a little bit of a sort of a break mentally, <laughs> and then, you know, three seconds goes by and you have three game points against you. Game, Salazar, Rigolato, Rigolato. They make the second game five six to four. I think we did hear him wrong. He meant five games to four, right, Steve? Can you five. imagine five sets to four? I don't think I could watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I five. could watch anything, but I could never watch that. I don't like this game that much. So, yeah, five to four, <laughs> huge game. Uh, with a little bit of a letdown. You're right, Patty, this is a momentum game and as hard fought it was to claw their way back. Um, you know, just a 38 second game or a change in the momentum uh, gives Salazar and Regalado the opportunity to sort of uh, even this match out at a set of piece, but uh, it looks like it's Graham McNerney to serve, so work's not done yet. Someone suggested that maybe if they do split sets that Juan and Graham should go inside and get matching outfits. Keep up with keep up with the Joneses across the net. So I don't I don't know about you. I think it was at Philly Cricket during the Grand Prix that they pulled out the Regalas R T shirts. Matching shirts, matching color pants, matching shoes, a la you know, Zabori and, and uh, Hanish. I like it. I love it. It's a little bit, you know, Padel esque. Maybe it's leaning towards NASCAR X. I'm waiting for some sponsorships to show up on that shirt. Uh, but I like it. Love it. Pickleball. See a lot of matching outfits in pickleball. Oh. 
hopefully the viewers can appreciate how good a dig that was by Elvi Regalado in the corner. All the viewers know is the guy doesn't miss. I mean, it's a, it's a master class in just patient, athletic digging out of the corner. Well, and that's the thing, the top level is scored. None of these guys miss too many screens. It, it, you've got to get a, a nick, a ball that just, you know, flies and, you know, or maybe hits a seam or something. They don't miss any other screens. And that's why it's such a cat and mouse type of sport. You know, it's interesting. You see Jose Salazar sort of taking more balls. Oh, he missed another one right on top of the net. 15 all. Got exactly the shot he wanted, moved into position, blitzed, and uh, that's won this game, won the last game where he sort of uh, missed the one he didn't want to miss. Yep, and when he came in there, he was making, you know, he got caught. He made, a, he made a poor decision. He was trying to decide where to hit the ball. A lot of times when you have a guy in a transition and he's transitioning back toward the baseline, simply putting the ball at his feet might be your best shot. And, you know, the least amount of a swinging shot where errors come in with a little bit more of a swing on that. And, you know, McNerney doesn't miss any volleys, too many volleys. So we, I can't harsh him at all for missing that one. But it was an opportunity that he blew. What I started saying the last point, most of the time, Jose is going to take that ball before it gets into the corner. And I think, like, the, like he does there, the reality is these guys are so good, the odds of them hitting a nick are just really, really high. Like there's a nick there that Juan read perfectly. Um, Jose doesn't like to give that opportunity a chance where, oh, great shot. Alvi tends to let it go into the corner and, and uh, roll the dice a little bit. And I think, you know, when I talk about a nickel, I'm talking about that ball that flies out of the corner. That part, Mark Parsons and used to And point ender, yeah. Yep. Kind of, you know, where not a ball that kind of stays in that corner, and these guys will wait it out and let that ball just drop. Rebound, rebound off the, you know, back, back side screen or side back screen. Um, and staying deep in that corner, and they know they're just setting up for a lob. That's the point. You know, I, I see people who watch this game and say to me, this is unbelievable. How do you win a point? Because they're so good. And because they can play things off the screens, and that's that's the challenging part, and that's why, you know, the sport is uh, at the top level. God only knows, 80% mental. 40, 30. Maybe more. All right, so it's 40-15. Basically, what that means in the no-ad situation is there's three game points in a row for McNerney and a uh, tough luck court. Who would like to receive? Here's our next deuce no-ad point. Right, sudden death. This point wins the game. Uh, but this is the third game point in a row for McNerney and Araya. It's also set point for Regalado and Salazar. Pace. What pace? Game. Oh. Orion McNary, we are tied at five. And that's, you know, Patty, that's the ball that you run that risk. These guys are so good. They're so accurate. They send it in the corner at different paces, different spins. Um, that ball absolutely went dead right off the screen. I 
mean, it just, what does it take to win a point, Steve? It's just amazing. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm going to just put it out there. I love no ad. I love the concept of, love. think about the importance of that point, the high stakes of that point. It's set point, it's game point. Um, it goes, you know, 50, 60 shots, multiple transitions back and forth from the net. And it, you know, it, you ask the question, that's what it took. And this is, you know, paddle at its best that's going to, you know, I think bring the best out of these players. So I, I love the addition of no ad in this tournament. I was waiting for the switch, so there they, there they go. They waited a few more shots than I thought. You mentioned before, Patty, Alvi testing the volleys. You know, I think the lesson, you know, for some of the, some of the club players or league players watching, when Alvi hits those balls, he's not hitting it 100%, you know, going for a winner shot. He's sort of hitting the 70, 80, maybe 85% speed that does have the opportunity to catch them off guard of the net. And that there it uh, paid off a little bit that Graham was maybe on his back foot. our executive director and join join the action and questioning me on some of my facts that I've been sharing with you today and I should say that I make up stuff as I go along and I, I, I have to fact check something Steve I'll report back in shortly on it all right I'll stay tuned <laughs> okay Whoa. Eric West chimed in on the uh, live stream he, he's Praying for no ad scoring. He loves it. Love it. I love it. I'm with I'm with West. I love it. I think these guys, they're so good. They're so fit. A four-hour match, you know, four matches in a day on a tough day in a tournament like this that could go three hours per match. I don't, I'm not sure it adds to the game. Um, I love the pressure and the sudden death aspect of no ad. But maybe not the finals of a big tournament. I Maybe I, I'm a little bit mixed on my view, but uh, certainly early rounds love it. Well, I think if there's uh, draws of 64 and you're playing four matches in a day, you definitely need to do it. I think it would have great use in the first two rounds maybe of a tournament like that, uh, for sure. And it does add a huge level of excitement to you. I I'm with you. Well, listen, there was a, at Philly Cricket, there was, a, I believe, Moyo Christian um, against Ben Kine, uh, I who... Uh, Russ's partner was. I think they went three hours in a no ad match uh, as well today. So it doesn't it doesn't overly shorten the matches, but uh, just gives a little bit of excitement. Yeah, I think it adds excitement. I don't think it shortens it, to tell you the truth, because it seems like each of the no ad points goes on really long, <laughs> because no one really wants to risk too much. You know, one of the points was very fast today. The others were 10 minute points. Yeah. I like it because you only get one serve, puts more pressure on the server. The team, return team gets to figure out who wants it, who's just got the hot return of serve going. And just adds another fun element to the game. They're definitely using that big swinging volley to Juan. Uh, I think they went once or twice to Graham, but they're, they keep going back at it. I'm not sure it's given them any advantage, to be honest.
Ma che te? Eres tonto, Dio! Eres tonto! 40, 30! Oh! Che rabbia, Dio, di verità! Yep, Alvi just putting it out there. Stupid shot, dumb shot. Um, went that went forward a little too soon in the point. Oh. 40 all, who would like to receive? Here we go. An off speed return for McNerney right yep. there. Huge folly error. Yeah. Cummins pointed out that when Alvi and Jose talk to each other, they talk in Spanish, but when they call for help, they just say help. <laughs> so we can understand it. A lot of scrambling going on in this point. Certainly the the importance of the point. You know, both teams are a little bit reserved, but uh, McNerney and Arai are just trying to lob their way to find an opening here. So Patty, who's in the advantage at this point, in this in this actual point, the net team or the the baseline team? Baseline. Oh, we went for it. I don't mind. I don't mind the attempt. He just missed the execution. That's his shot. Uh, it, they went deep in the point. They took the net back. I agreed with you that they were the uh, in the offense there, but uh, I like well, the I attempt. I just felt just like they it. were right. I don't think. I, I think all four players, no issue, no, fa you know. But I think Juan and Graham were just settled in on the baseline. I felt like it was going exactly how they wanted it. It yep. felt like you know the early goings in this match. I would say. Totally agree. So now, Miguelato and Salazar are up six five here. Like Regalado got his hair cut for nationals early. Looking looking totally fit. And I mean, I can't wait to see these guys up in Boston at nationals because I truly think either of these teams has a chance to win the national championship. Totally agree. All right, a couple quick momentum shifts in the last four games. Uh, Juan Araya to serve, down 5 6, but up oh. a set. Juan won this event last year, Steve. Did you know that? I did not know that. He teamed up with Eric West, speaking of Eric West, and uh, they beat Chris Humphreys and uh, Felipe Osis Koning in the finals last year. Love 15. Boy. 15 all. Steve, global thing on the chat. You know, typically who's in control, the net team or the baseline team? I think it all depends on the skill level and the matchups of the players in it. I just felt right at that moment when you asked me, I simply said the baseline team just because I felt I felt like Juan and Graham were in total control and Juan and Graham got exactly what he was looking for. Um, well, you answer, Patty. You answer the question I asked because I was seeing it the exact same way. It wasn't the... In Whoa. traditional paddle, who's in it? Who's in the advantage? It was in that point, but based on these teams, this very specific situation. I, I, I think you heard the question I asked, and that's that's the way I was thinking about it as well. Okay, so just you thought I should explain myself. Yep. Nope, totally agree, and I agree with the traditional thinking as well. Steve, you're just an agreeable kind of guy, it seems. You caught me on a good day. <laughs> You see a beautiful sunset here creeping go, through go. the court, which, while it doesn't look as bright as it has, it's a bit tricky for um, for Rye and McNerney, who sort of have that sun 
still kind of a little bit in their eye line. The paddle facility it manufactures is sort of set up on a hill looking out across a valley where you can see the golf course, a very picturesque spot and a beautiful winter sunset. Beautiful spot for an encampment. Washington chose well. Very methodical take back of the net by Juan. Oh my goodness, what a spot. Three, uh, 40, three great 30. aggressive volleys to take over the net and uh, what a waterfall there. Two screener. Rigolato, just we talked about how he's just not missing anything out of that ad court, and Salazar's feeling it. Don't you feel like he seems much more comfortable with with the play here? I'd be a little nervous about giving Jose a lot of looks right now. Yeah, he's he's got every shot. He's much more reserved in when he pulls it out, but it, but uh, make no mistake, Jose Salazar has every shot in the book. And I, I like watching the differences of how they're playing the corners where Salazar is much more, oh, what a stretch. Oh. Sick, sick slider down the line. Put our back in time. You know, when uh, Araya played years ago, he played a lot in that, you know, he did play a lot in the ad court. He just had that shot, that backhand that just sits up there off, coming off that backside screen. And we've seen him just hit that shot and just carve up his opponents. And uh, that was a big time play, key moment. I think Juan and Juan's Moody's over. Araya His Moody's over, but you know, I. Nothing. I just saw such a high level from Juan in the first five, six games of this match. Of course, he won on his little walkabout, but boy, the last, the last 10 minutes, Juan is back. He, uh, he's played three or four masterful points in the last two games that uh, are about as vintage Juan as I can think. Aaron, that's what I said. You know, when you have a player like Juan, he's a former national champ, was in another final with uh, aforementioned Jeff Morneau out of Providence College. Um, you know, he is a guy that can dictate the outcome of matches. Help me, one. Help. So what do we think? Does the Juan Cutter come, come back into this tiebreaker? Do we see it one more time? Hmm. If he needs it. <laughs> if he needs yeah, it. Two, uh, two quick points. he needs points. it. Really surprised, pulled the trigger and missed that shot. Two up, lead for Araya McNerney in the 
second set tiebreaker. Great return of serve right there. Yeah, this is where you see the play. The player on the right, when you see the back of them. You see Salazar, now they switched. They kind of cover the net, sort of like traditional tennis in a way, with half of the court covered versus covering a third. Yeah. Two thirds with the side Gary of the court where the ball is. Two to one. Immediately following the completion of this match will be the women's finals. Morgan Sikora against Harris and Ali. Help. Go. Oh, what a dig. I, I couldn't believe he let that go to the screen. He's so confident in his ability to dig that out. Now, a lot of times when that ball's coming in with so much spin, it's really hard to control the direction of your lob, whereas if you let it drop off the screen and you've got those low flick shots, which Regalado, all these players have, you know, it's to their advantage to almost let that ball go in. Sometimes you can't cut it off, but you're right, it's just a different style of play. You can play anything out of the screen, so why not? You know, it lets him, you know, he's got the tempo and he's got a real good feel for how he plays the baseline. And I mean, He's unbelievably good. So I think we're three, yeah, three one, I was just gonna say. So three one, Orion McNerney. Nice pace, just a softball into the corner and uh, got a little nick. I don't see Graham trying to match Juan's outfit here for Nationals. I got to call it like it is, Steve. <laughs> no so green headbands, no team green headbands? I don't think so. <laughs> no team uh, green camo, skull, skull you pants? Probably not. I don't think uh, Xenon would let that happen for Graham. But uh, again, not too mad at the matching outfits. Is, it, I mean, his manners have returned. He just said, you please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought Salazar had a shot to take a shot at Graham on that ball or through the middle. Passed it up. Both teams very conservative. It's almost like every point in this tiebreaker is like that no at point, but we'll go as long as it takes. That's what I'm saying. Salazar loves that play. I think Graham's going back there a little too much. Because um, I've seen Salazar just lights out in that situation all year long. Yeah, Graham's overhead in the deuce court. He's quite aggressive with it. And I think... Um, you called it right, Patty. There's a couple opportunities that Salazar's let go. He had one, um, but Graham's going pretty hard at cross court to the deuce court with his overhead, like that one. Now, he can't attack that, but uh, he's got to well, hit that Well, if it's perfect. side back, hard to attack, but back side, yeah, yeah. he can attack. 
as he can see the court in front of him as he comes out, you know, up that side screen. You. You. Great lob right there. You. Tweener. No, no, no! Come on! Come on! Huge point. Arrive at the early lead, four to two. Huge point. No, what? Hey, what are you going? No. No. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, serve direction and poach direction. Oh, hey. Come on! Come on! Arrive right, McNary lead five to two. Tough, tough miss. Alvy's missed a few uh, first ball returns in this set, but uh, five two. Jose sells are to serve. Arrived at nearly five to three. Wow. I am shocked Juan did that right there, to tell you the truth. Well, he's in, he's in Graham's ear. I think he wanted to move more out of the way. Uh, but I agree. They've been going so... Oh, just a little bit out of position. Arrived at nearly eight, six to three. Wow, we just got you know a little late on that ball. I've seen, like I said, I've seen Salazar <laughs> go through the season and not miss that shot once, and cut that ball off and put his team in a brilliant position. Didn't work out that time. All of a sudden, six three, a couple of match points here for Orion McNerney. I got you. I got you. I go, I go, I go. Come on! Arrive McNeary win the second game set in a tie break. They cut the two sets. Congratulations. Steve, I mean, great action. What a win for Araya McNerney. Um, you know, they have put themselves in a wonderful position uh, to have a shot at winning this tournament. For Graham McNerney, he's atop our leaderboard in the APTA Cup standings. And uh, given that Salazar was very close by this win, Creates a little separation. Uh, great match. Any any uh, final words, Steve? I'll keep it simple. Graham McNerney, man of the season. Juan Araya, man of the match. Super fun. Uh, that's all I got. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here from Manufacturers Club in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes for the women's final. Thanks so much, Steve. Ready for a whole new training experience? Welcome to Volley. At Volley, we've developed the first AI training system for racket sports, providing pros with the advanced teaching tools they've been waiting for and giving players a new way to level up their game and enhance their time on the court. Ask your pro about a Volley lesson today and learn what Volley can do for you. We'll see you on the court.